up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 toyota sequoia courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because of course it has been completely redesigned for 2023 it shares the same underpinnings as the tundra and the land cruiser at least over in japan of course land cruiser isn't in the u.s right now but it may be in the future but anyways this is definitely a large three-row suv as well so ultimately we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 sequoia first one being the sr5 starting at 59,865 limited for $66,265 platinum which is the one we are in today starting at 72,465 trd pro for 77,565 and lastly the capstone for $76,865 and by the way that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive variant except for that trd pro that comes standard with four wheel drive if you wanted to add four wheel drive to any of those trim levels simply add $3,000 then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the sequoia is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.4 liter twin turbo v6 hybrid putting out 437 horsepower 5200 rpm 583 pound feet of torque coming in at 2400 rpm that power again sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.6 seconds we'll give that a shot here in a little bit with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 24 on the highway for the rear wheel drive at least 19 city 22 then on the highway for the four wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so now before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the sequoia i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a circular dial located directly behind the shifter if you turn that to the left and the right you got eco normal sport and then there's also a tow and haul mode button as well so ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put the sequoia to the test let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 sequoia here up to speed all right three two one go! okay this thing is moving <laughs> that is fun <laughs> that was quick man that is plenty of an acceleration for the sequoia honestly i didn't know an suv of this size was gonna move like that that was a very very good acceleration for this thing and honestly zero to 60 and 5.6 is an impressive number in itself but yeah, that was a really, really good acceleration. Definitely impressive. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.6 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes, that comes in at 134 feet, which is not the best number on paper, but let's go ahead and just hit the brakes real quick. It's okay. It's not bad. The braking feel itself isn't bad. It's a little bit on the firmer side of things, but having said that, 134 feet is definitely not the best number, but it is an expected number at the size of the Sequoia. And I have seen as bad as 139 feet, so it's not horrible, honestly. 134 feet is fine. It's just eh, it's just a little bit on the higher side of things for a 60 easier stopping distance. That's all. But anyways, braking feel is fine. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, coil spring multi-link rear suspension. I did wanna mention though for the TRD Pro, you get a TRD Pro off-road suspension with 2.5 inch Fox bypass coilovers, also rear remote reservoir shocks, and a TRD Pro front stabilizer bar as well. And I did want to also mention a little optional suspension component being the adaptive variable suspension with air suspension that's going to be available for the Platinum and the Capstone in case you were interested. It doesn't come standard on any particular trim level, but it is available. Essentially what that is, is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road up perfections, giving you a smoother ride, but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So really giving you the best of both worlds. So that's one where you will definitely notice the difference in ride quality, especially. So. If you want the smoothest ride, go with that option. So speaking of, as far as ride quality goes, it's been great in my short little test drive here today. I've had absolutely no issues. Having said that, just turning a little bit there, there is a decent amount of body roll as expected in an SUV of this size. So do you get a little bit of that? So obviously you're not gonna get the very best handling, not that anyone's gonna be taking the Sequoia to a circuit track anyways, but there is some body roll. I just wanted to say that. As far as cabin noise goes, it's actually 
It's actually really, really good. Now I have the AC on, so you might be hearing that, but as far as road noise and wind noise goes, it's almost non-existent. And that's partly due to a part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield. And I did want to also mention, if you go with the capstone at least, you also do get acoustic laminated front side glass. So I don't have that one today, but we do have the acoustic laminated front windshield. And like I said, cabin noise has been definitely on the luxury side of things without a doubt. As far as steering feel goes, it's definitely on the looser side of things as expected in an SUV. UV, so it's not a bad thing it's just it's as you would expect the steering feel to feel like in the sequoia i'll just put it that way the touching of visibility i can see actually perfectly fine out my rear view mirror right now and that may be due in part because the third row uh the third row seats are folded down so we got no third row headrest up right now we'll have to take a look at that later maybe but rain sensing windshield wipers will come standard on the platinum trim level and up and if you were to go with that capstone you will also get a head-up display that i actually am looking at right now so it is available on the platinum trim level so i do want to mention that but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 toyota sequoia all right so here she is you guys the new 2023 toyota sequoia love this look especially finished in red but again it shares a frame with the tundra as well as the land cruiser over in japan in case you were curious about that but as always let's go ahead and start up front on the sequoia here so let me actually start by touching on the front grill a little bit because it is going to differ substantially depending upon the trim level that you go with for example the sr5 is going to give you a black horizontal bar front grill with some chrome surrounds the limited is going to give you a gray front grill Plan Platinum is going to kind of give you this dark mesh front grille, which you guys are looking at right now, of course. You're going to get Toyota lettering on that front grille if you go with the TRD Pro. And lastly, with the capstone, you're going to get a chrome accented mesh front grille. So again, it differs with every single trim level option that is available. So that's kind of interesting. But also with that capstone, you get an integrated LED light bar and some amber marker lights as well. So that's pretty cool. But let's take a look at the sides there. LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board with LED daytime running lights get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams though so if you have your high beams on at night since the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so that's definitely nice led fog lights down below you guys can see those for every single trim level across the board i really like the look of those they look really darn good down there and fun fact for you if you actually go with the trd pro you do get premium led headlights so wanted to mention that as well but overall i think we can all agree this looks pretty much like the new toyota tundra in the front end which is definitely not a bad thing i like the look but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side so now since we are around to the side of the sequoia roof rails do come standard on every single trim level across the board to get rear privacy glass as well along with a gloss black a pillar you guys can see that in the front there for every single trim level across the board so that's a nice little design element there automatic power extending running boards for the capstone that's going to be optional on the platinum we actually do have that today and actually since i mentioned it let me go ahead and show you how that works real quick essentially all you need to do is just open the door and they automatically deploy and then when you shut the door give it a couple seconds and they're automatically fold back up into the vehicle like that so pretty cool so to take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turn signals then as well and then take a look at the wheel setup they will differ again substantially dependent upon the trim level 18 inch alloys for the sr5 20 inch alloys for the limited and platinum 18 inch forged aluminum bbs wheels for the trd pro of course and then 22 inch alloys for the capstone but that pretty much rounds out the side profile i love the look of the side profile definitely looks good with all the gloss black accents on this red but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you do have a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you do have led tail lights that do come standard on all trim levels across the board i absolutely love that got that toyota sequoia lettering spelled out horizontally on the rear lift gate as well definitely look Looks good by the way if you were interested in towing with the sequoia you can do that max towing capacity available on this one actually comes in at a very impressive 9520 pounds so that is not too bad either one of the coolest things on the tailgate of the sequoia i want to show you guys is there's actually a button to kind of flip up that rear class it's almost a hidden button but if you press that button you do have the ability to go ahead and flip up the rear glass. Makes for easier loading, I guess, if you wanted to do that. Or you could just let the breeze in, I guess. If you park at a beach, you can just back into the ocean, I guess, and check out the view. So that is a wonderful feature I love on the Sequoia. So 
let's go ahead and shut that anyways last thing i wanted to mention to you guys underneath here you do have a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath on the uh, driver's side there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around to the back of the Sequoia when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a power tailgate for all trim levels across the board so that's definitely nice there's a button on the key fob there of course is a rubberized button on the tailgate itself then as well but once opened up cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 22.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space of course there is a 60 40 split so you can fold that third row down so behind the second row that comes in at 49 cubic feet and with all rows folded 86.9 cubic feet so right around the amount of cubic feet as a toyota highlander or honda pilot or something like that but there were some buttons actually in the cargo area i was a big fan of them it was very easy to uh fold down and up that third row so i liked seeing that back there there's led cargo lighting back there there is a 120 volt power outlet if you were to go with that limited trim level end up there's also a very nice multi-level cargo shelf system back there so can essentially take the shelf and move it up or down there's a bunch of different slots essentially you could just kind of slot it in above so that was pretty cool but so then making our way up to the third row legroom that is going to come in at 33.7 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there of course rear ventilation is going to come standard there's vents on the uh the kind of roof of this thing for all three rows and by the way those second row seats actually slide up to six inches forward and backwards there's actually buttons for those third row passengers to do that so if they need a little more legroom that is one simple way to go ahead and do that. There are some uh, cup holders back there. There's actually rear charging ports for those third row passengers as well, which you definitely don't always find. And one thing you almost definitely don't find in third rows of other SUVs, there are third row side window sunshades. Typically that's just a second row thing if it even comes with it, but with the Sequoia, you got third row side window sunshade. So that was pretty darn cool to see back there as well. But anyways, then making our way up to the second row legroom, that's gonna come in at 39.2 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Heated rear seats are gonna come with the platinum and the capstone trim levels. You do have some charging ports back there, of course. Again, you got the second row sunshades to go along with the third row sunshades. And by the way, that's for the limited trim level and up. I should mention that. And if you were curious about bench seating versus captain's chairs you do get the bench sheeting with the sr5 and the limited however all the other trim levels are going to come standard with captain's chairs like we have on this one today but so then making our way up to the front seats you will find a fabric trim for the sr5 soft text upholstery for the limited leather seating then for the platinum trim leveling up you're going to find memory settings for the limited trim leveling up all seats though are going to be power adjustable with power lumbar so that's definitely nice and if you wanted heated and ventilated front seats go with the limited trim level and up but overall as far as seat comfort goes it was fine nothing too crazy not the very most comfortable seats but they're not bad honestly so shouldn't have any issues taking this thing on a long road trip but let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped and it will be heated for the limited trim level and up and i kind of like the thick grips on it too the 10 to 2 grips especially the bottom grip that is a very thick grip right there so but so now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key got lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and the toyota logo of course but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that bright blue engine start button located just kind of by the driver's right knee and so once started up 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster will come standard for all trim levels across the board so that's definitely very nice and the cool thing about this digital gauge is, is if you change the drive modes it will adjust the gauges ever so slightly not too much of an adjustment honestly but it does switch it up a little bit so so I did like that. Steering wheel mounted controls are found on the left side of the steering wheel. You could toggle between uh, trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, your uh, average miles per gallon as well. You got a little compass up there, radio information, uh, if you need an oil change or some other kind of service. So pretty much has everything you could possibly want because it is a digital gauge cluster. That's basically why. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof coming on the SR5 Limited and TRD Pro. Panoramic roof coming on the Platinum and Capstone. LED interior lighting for all trim levels across the board. Wireless phone charger for the Platinum trim level and up. 
homelink controls for all trim levels across the board as well. I love that. And that can be found just below kind of this frameless rear view mirror. So big fan of that as well. And since we're up here, we actually have an overhead sunglass holder here on the roof of this thing. So I like that. Overall, as far as interior quality goes, it's not bad. It's pretty much finished like the interior of the uh, Tundra. So if you've seen the interior of the new Tundra, that is essentially what you're looking at. You do have some cool platinum lettering found just above the uh, passenger side glove box. I would imagine that would change depending upon the trim level that you go with obviously i like the blue contrast stitching it matches with the blue engine start button since this is a hybrid it's going to be a lot of blue accents but just to the right of the shifter that's where your wireless phone charger is located a little bit of storage there you do have a uh, dual cup holders as well and within the center armrest here there is an absolute ton of space as you would imagine because of the size of the vehicle there's some coin holders in there there's a couple usb charging ports actually as well but so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment the tech here eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come on the sr5 trim level only however all other trim levels are going to get a 14 inch color touchscreen display giving you bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay as well and by the way that's a wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, so that's even better. You can check out some driving statistics up there if you wanted to, along with your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's gonna be an eight speaker sound system for the SR5 Unlimited, and then a 14 speaker JBL sound system for the Platinum TRD Pro and Capstone. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio today. Let's see what we got planned, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna say about that is the bass was really, really good. I was expecting a bit more clarity with 14 speakers, but honestly, it wasn't bad. It's certainly an excellent sound system for the size of this vehicle. Again, the bass was amazing. Not the best sound system I've ever heard though. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Sequoia in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board along with a panoramic view monitor. And yes, that comes standard for every single trim level across the board. That's going to be that view to the right there, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS has not yet tested the Sequoia. So typically I give you those ratings, but there isn't any yet. But anyways, I will say the new Tundra was an IIHS top safety pick plus and since the sequoia is built on the same frame i would imagine the sequoia would probably be the same but anyways front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard toyota safety sense 2.5 which will give you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection dynamic radar cruise control lane departure alert with steering assist lane tracing assist road sign assist blind spot Spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert trailer merge warning and front and rear parking sensors as well that's a good bit actually so overall when it comes to my final thoughts this thing does have a good bit of space about the same as a highlander a pilot which is plenty of space for me honestly but if you wanted more space you might want to wait for the grand highlander because what toyota has said is they're shooting for nearly 100 cubic feet in that one as opposed to the 86 in this so do want to mention that but also love the styling on this thing it looks dang good power is plentiful in this sequoia i will say that it didn't expect this thing to move as well as it did also as far as third seat leg and headroom goes that was plenty fine so i'm six feet tall like i said i was easily able to fit in that third row not only that my my headroom was perfectly fine as well i saw some other reviews where they said that headroom was an issue for them but i showed you guys on camera i wanted to kind of debunk that to see if it was true or not i was easily able to fit at six feet so maybe if you're six four or six five sitting in the third row I would say you're going to have an issue, but what are you doing sitting in the third row if they're that tall anyways? But overall, as far as room for improvement goes, I would say maybe the interior quality a little bit. There is a lot of uh, hard plastic kind of surrounding the shifter and all of that. I wouldn't have minded if they swapped that out a little bit. And uh, the other thing is I would kind of, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about reliability because I know it's a twin turbo V6. That's also a hybrid. It's just a lot. And I know Toyota is known for incredible reliability, uh, but that's typically with their naturally aspirated engines and their hybrids as well. But I don't know about a twin turbo v6 but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new sequoia in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold